guys, in today's video I want to talk about uh, the Great Scrap Quilt. I finished it last week, I shared the nine blocks, I talked about the quilts along, and it's now pieced together completely. I'm going to hand quilt this. I have never done a quilt completely from start to finish hand quilting. I've done three quilts in the past where I machine quilted some of it and then I did accent quilting um, with big stitch quilting in between. I burned myself out all three times <laughs> because the first one was flannel and a flannel front and a flannel back and it was just too difficult to get that needle through and get a good rocking motion. Uh, the second one was a large lap size and it had a ton of detail and it just was overwhelming. Then I did an even larger lap size a few weeks after that uh, where I had quilted a ton of machine lines and then I decided to add big stitch quilting in between. This time, I want to set myself up for success. I want to enjoy the process and I want to fall in love with hand quilting because I do like having something that I can keep my hands busy with when I'm hanging out, when we're watching movies, that kind of thing. Uh, so I did the baby size and I'm doing big stitch quilting, which differs from regular hand quilting because um, it is a thin, it's a thicker thread. Um, hand quilting is a thinner thread and then the big stitch quilting uses like the pearl cotton. Um, it's different from embroidery floss because that's three or sorry that's six strands woven together that you can kind of pull apart and with pearl cotton you can't do that. It does come in a variety of thicknesses so you can kind of choose what uh, design you're going for, what look you're going for. I typically use number eight. So I've also selected a bunch of colors because I had this kind of ambitious quilting and idea. And I love it so far. I completed one square yesterday. I started on the second square today. And again, this is a long-term project, so I'm not rushing to beat it. I will be sharing the progress with you guys. And right now I wanna talk about the quilting stand and just kind of show you where I am with the actual quilting and then talk about the tools that I'm using and the colors as well. So I finished my quilt top that I talked about last week and I wanted to go ahead and just show you how I'm basing it. I'm planning on hand quilting this. So I have my pearl cotton rolled out so I could see what the colors I had were. First what I do is take the batting and I tape it to the floor so that it's super taut. I use all four corners. The tape that I use is a brown craft tape and I will show you it right over here. It's this one I get from Amazon. I can include the link in the description. It's just really strong, but it doesn't leave a mark on anything. Uh, I have used it for the years now, and I absolutely love it. The other thing that I do is I put the batting. So the backing, you know, you always wanna have at least four inches extra on either side, and then I lay my batting on top and then I lay the top on. When I pin, I start pinning from the middle and I work my way out. This is the first time I've actually used this. It's called Quick Clips and they sent it to me probably about a year ago. I just hadn't basted my own quilt in that long. So I was excited to get to try it today. This worked really well because I'm gonna actually put this in a quilting hoop so I can hand quilt it with some big stitch quilting. And these are a lot smaller than my basting pins I usually use, which are just the traditional, you know, safety pins that are larger. They have this curve in it, which makes it really easy to kind of scoop it in. And then it comes with this tool that you, after it comes through, you just poke it in and it inserts into the safety pin. I, but I started from the middle and then I smooth and pull taut as I go on the outside and I was able to quickly get all of this done with these quick clips. It was pretty enjoyable and usually I get kind of lazy with the basting because you should baste at least with a hand width and I end up doing farther, a lot farther than that. Now when I machine quilt I actually always do spray basting, unless I'm using a minky backing, because spray basting, I don't have to take out 
the pins when I'm doing different patterns and things, it's just easier. But since I'm going to be hand quilting this and moving it a lot, I really wanted to make sure it was like set in there. So I've gone ahead and done the actual pin basting. Call it again, it's the Quick Clip System. They had sent this to me to try about a year ago and I just got uh, an opportunity to go ahead and try it. So super excited with this. Uh, I'm gonna go get this set up in my quilting hoop and I'll be ready to start. All right, so I'm in my bedroom because that's where I plan to be doing a lot of hand quilting in this corner here. And this is the hoop I found. I found this at an antique shop. We have some fantastic shops and they just have the best stuff. I had never seen a floor hoop like this and it was in pristine condition. So all I've done is loosen the bottom and then I'm gonna go ahead and take the hoop off and I will put the quilt in there and then I'll show you what it looks like. I have gone ahead and put the quilt in there. I just had to move one clip that was in the way right there, but look how good that looks. <laughs> this is one of those antique finds, guys, that I didn't know if I was gonna use it because I just haven't done, I've hand quilted two quilts years ago and I got burned out fast because one was gigantic, big mistake, and one was a flannel front and a flannel back and it was just too thick and too much work. So this is my third attempt at trying this. Um, but I thought, you know, if I ever wanna try hand quilting again or big stitch quilting, which is what I'm gonna do with this one, I am definitely gonna use it. And here I am using it. So the difference between hand stitch quilting or hand quilting and um, big stitch quilting, they're similar, except big stitch quilting uses pearl cotton thread. It's the one I showed you earlier. It's thicker, it's faster because you are using um, a lot bigger stitches. When you hand quilt, you know, it's thread and the stitches tend to be a lot finer. In the antique quilts you find, uh, they can be as much as 12 stitches per inch, which is crazy good. Mine never got off to quite that um, much. In the first two quilts I did ended up being, they were big stitch quilting and still that burned me out. So anyway, I am super glad that I got this. You can just see the base. I started it in the middle because that's where I'm going to start my quilting. I have no idea what design I'm gonna do. This is my great scrap quilt pattern. We're starting the quilts along on January 24th. The quilt pattern itself releases on January 20th in my Etsy shop. So you can get the pattern and then four days later, we're doing the year long quilt along. You can tell this has a ton of scraps in it, ton of pieces comes in four different sizes so I want it to have just a ton of time where there's no like we have to rush to finish it that's why I decided to do a whole year of a quilt along and um, there are several hundred people already signed up super excited about that and this should be a really fun event of course throughout this quilt along I'm going to be sharing this progress as well I'm making a second quilt during the quilt along using my regular scraps this is with my Christmas scraps. So I'm still gonna be thinking about the quilting design. Um, you know, I could do some stitching in between here. I could do it in between here. I could trace the chevrons. I could, you know, I've thought about doing just like a square around in this square. I'm not sure, there are endless options. I mean, I could even just do rows, right? I could just quilt big, rows in between. So I'm gonna have to think about it, look for some inspiration online. Here is the first part that I completed. So the idea for this quilting is I'm gonna actually trace each chevron shape with a contrasting thread. So here I use the pink one and now I'm starting on this blue one right here. So I'll go all the way around and I'm gonna kind of just wing it and see what thread I want to use for each color. Like this is more beige, so you know any of them could work, like the pink or the blue. I have a quite a few colors that I can go ahead and select from. And then um, I also found Allison Glass has some collections with pearl cotton 
They have beautifully bright colors that kind of remind me of this quilt palette. I have had a lot of fun remembering how to quilt, learning how to quilt, and getting this done. I want to take a moment here to talk about types of needles and stuff. So I have a pack of clover needles, and this is just one of the largest in the pack. It has a good sized eye, and so it makes it easy to thread, but it's not so thick that it becomes really difficult to pull out. Embroidery needles are much thicker, and I used that at first because it's just what I had. I grabbed it um, from my little girl's set and too thick. So I switched to this one with the little um, golden eyes. And when you start quilting, uh, you want to... So here are the colors that um, I am using. I got this wooden box in an antique store and I actually took it from my sewing desk because it's what I use to store my sewing notions on my desk, but I swiped it to use for here. So now I have this light pink. I picked this up at Joanne Fabrics yesterday. I had quite a few colors from, like I said, the earlier quilts. So this is a darker pink. And then I got this electric blue. You know, I wasn't sure if it was gonna work. And then when I actually held it up to the quilt, it was perfect. So it is gonna be a go on this one. And then I have a yellow, which I'm kinda wish this was a little bit brighter, but I still think it's gonna work. I got a basic black. I don't know that I will use this in the quilt, but I just thought this is probably a good one to have. And then of course, I have just a plain white, and this will be great because there are quite a few fabrics in that quilt that are very dark, like a dark green, um, or just wouldn't contrast a whole lot with some of these, so a white will be nice. And then I have some blues. Um, I'm just gonna, sit, like I said, I'm gonna play it by ear and just see what I'm going to put for each square. A couple of the tools that I'm using. This is the thimble that I am using and I put it on my um, pointer finger, although someone reminded me it's actually easier if you can get a lot of control with your middle finger and I'm left-handed, so that kind of um, makes things a little bit different. But I think I am gonna go ahead and try with my middle finger because I remember reading that that is a much better um, finger to go ahead and get the right pressure with. So I will do that, make that switch and Hand quilting is just all about learning what works for you and what you're comfortable with, but it can be really helpful to ask people who've hand quilted before. Other thing is this needle puller. So on my blog, I had interviewed Esther Miller and she uh, was a prolific hand quilter and she has a quilt shop in Germany. Unfortunately, she passed away uh, a couple months ago unexpectedly. She grew up Amish in Pennsylvania, and she learned how to hand quilt the old-fashioned way. And um, when I was researching and trying to figure out how to learn to do that on a different project, that's how I came across her. And she pointed me on her website to quite a few of these. A needle puller, invaluable, because when you load up those stitches, you can just pull them. And then this is the pack of clover needles that I have. So for traditional hand quilting, you tend to use much shorter needles. In fact, these are the needles that Esther recommends. They are absolutely itty bitty, maybe an inch, uh, because you can just get a much finer stitch. But for big stitch quilting, these ones are fine. They're Shishiko needles and they're the gold eye ones. Like I said, they work really well for me. And then of course I just have a pair of scissors nearby. All right, I wanted to show you how I take a few stitches here. So the key with hand quilting is you just wanna aim for consistency. And whether that means you are doing bigger stitches or smaller stitches, it's kind of personal preference here. Okay, so I'm gonna make sure that I put it in a good bit away. And I remember, yeah, it is definitely my middle finger. Um, and then I rock it backwards. So when I poke it, I kind of prick my finger, not where it hurts, but just so you feel, and then you rock it backwards. 
and that lets you load a couple stitches. So this is where it gets tough to pull out and it's why I love the needle puller because it just grips it. So, oh, I stuck it in my fabric, hold on, like that. And it saves your fingers so much from a lot of wear and tear, as does the thimble. So now I have two stitches. Once you get your rhythm, you can load sometimes, you know, three or four stitches with uh, traditional hand quilting. You know, some of those old quilts have 12 to 13 stitches per inch, which is just absolutely amazing. I'm not there, <laughs> nowhere near, but I can, um, I can do, you know, a couple of stitches here. And if you feel like, well, you, cause you can see where it's coming out the end right here, you can see if it ends up being too big. And so, um, see, it's just, you have to grip it a lot. You can do it. It's just, I prefer to use the needle puller because then I'm not getting like creases on my fingers or anything. Cause if you do it for a long time, um, is when you'll start to feel it on your hands. So middle finger like that, push it through and it goes really fast. You kind of end up getting this really great rhythm. And Esther Miller actually was able to keep this on her, um, I think I want to say like her middle finger like that and she just kept it so that way she could just grab it and pull it out and move on with her stitches. I keep almost losing my thread here like that. Okay, and then I'm gonna, so I'm keeping my needle puller on my hand. And it's funny how you just forget, like I did this a bunch last year when I was trying to learn the traditional hand quilting because I found a quilt frame. Actually, this one I'm gonna go ahead and just do one stitch because I wanna angle it down my next stitch. So I found a traditional quilt frame last year and that's what made me want to learn uh, hand quilting because I thought, you know, the traditional kind. I wanted to have hand quilted one quilt at least in my entire life. And that's what got me into it. And that's how I came across Esther Miller. But this is, you know, big stitch quilting is a little bit more modern. So the great thing about this quilt hoop is that I can actually switch it and move it any direction I want. It kind of, it swivels and rotates. We'll see if I can do this toward me. Ideally, you want to learn to quilt like both directions, all directions, um, away from you, toward you, but it does um, help that this hoop can be twisted any which way. So I can just turn it and now all of a sudden, I am this way again. So now I'm quilting left to right. And I am left-handed, so I kind of, you know, do things backwards for most people. <laughs> but it works. So I'm just going to take a few more stitches. And you can just see, you get like, see, that one was too thick. You get into a groove. You get your rocking down, and it goes pretty fast. And this color is just so good. See, and then I can just grab it with my needle puller. Just like that. A couple more stitches. The goal here is to go all the way around each one of these. And that's why I said it was kind of ambitious. But again, it's a baby size. So if I was gonna do this on a large lap size for you know, my re-entrance project, that probably would have been too much. But this is just nine blocks in each. Um, one is doable, that's what I think. That's what I'm telling myself. But honestly, I have enjoyed this process so much already that I don't think it's gonna be a problem finishing it. And I'm also not racing to finish it. When I was hand quilting, they were actually for, for gifts, and so I had to get them done by a certain time. Not doing that this time, it's just whenever I finish it, I'm gonna finish it. So if you ever feel like your stitches are, um, too far apart or you missed messed one up you know the great thing is you can just remove it and try again so I'm gonna go one more pass here and show you using my needle puller 
even since, ah, can't even grip it. I'm closing it before I actually have it. Even since yesterday, I have improved tremendously because I kept forgetting all the little things that I had learned um, when I was hand quilting. So there you go. That is it for today's video. I'm going to keep you guys uh, updated on the progress. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. I um, do my best to answer them quickly. And then I'm also going to put some links. I will link some of these things for you guys, like the quick clips, and I will link the needle puller, the symbol that I use, and um, of course my shop. This pattern is coming out on January 20th. The quilt along itself is free. You just need the pattern, and it'll be in for sale in my shop on January 20th. If you want to sign up for the quilts along, signups are open on quiltingforfour.com. There are already over 250 quilters signed up and more keep coming every day. So I am super excited. It's going to be a fun year of using scrap.